Lettuce is hands down the most purchased vegetable at the grocery store. And in this video, we're gonna show you exactly how to grow it from seed to harvest. Lettuce, or Lactuca sativa, actually has a pretty storied history in cultures around the world. It's been cultivated for at least 2,700 years, up to maybe 6,000 years or so. There are murals in ancient Egypt of lettuce where it actually wasn't really grown as a salad. In fact, it was seen more as a sexual stimulant as when lettuce grows up, the part of it that you almost never see when you grow lettuce as a gardener, it grows erect and it produces a milky sap. So it was consumed, I guess it was thought that perhaps there was some sort of crossover there. And even in Greece, it had a lot of different connotations for sedatives, digestive aids, and that's actually where it got the name Lactuca, lact meaning, you know, milk or lactation or something like that. So a very interesting history behind this plant and a lot of different seeds and types of lettuce that you can grow. If you want more history, we'll probably do a video on that, but let's talk now about seeds and varieties. Growing lettuce, of course, starts with a seed, but with lettuce, there are so many different varieties. I wanna break down the categories of seeds you can get yourself into. There's a variety for everyone. Your first variety is gonna be any cause variety, but it's more commonly known as romaine. So it's gonna have these sort of long, spoonish shaped leaves. They're pretty heat tolerant, and they're generally a little more nutritious than some of the other varieties that we'll get into. And you can use the heart or the interior after you've stripped away all the leaves as sort of a celery replacement. So a really popular variety of romaine is Paris Island cause. Your next variety is gonna be any sort of loose leaf variety of lettuce. So I have a very popular one here called Black Seeded Simpson. Loose leaf means exactly what it says. They tend to be very frilly, a little bit crinkly. They're very delicious, very beautiful lettuce. And honestly, experiment with these because you don't just have to grow a green one. They have colors that range the full spectrum. Next up, we have the boring lettuce, dare I say. This would be the iceberg style or crisp head style lettuce. Now this one here, Ice Queen, I have to say, does not look so boring. The stems of each leaf are really big and kind of wrap around. But this is the one you find at the grocery store. It's iceberg lettuce. It's crunchy, it's crispy, it's not super nutrient dense, but if you love it, you love it. Next up you have Butterhead Lettuce, and this lettuce right here, Little Gem Lettuce, this is the one you see at all the fancy restaurants, Gem Salad, Little Gem Salad. It's a Butterhead Lettuce. This is a particularly small style of Butterhead high in nutrients, high in minerals, but you really want cooler temps and you want really nice and rich soil for butterheads. They just prefer a little more love. There are a few different categories I haven't mentioned, some unusual varieties, Celtis, which is a lettuce grown primarily for its stem. But if you really don't know what to do, just get a mix. This is a mescaline mix of lettuce from Botanical Interests. There are a ton of varieties. In fact, many I haven't even mentioned that we've listed down in the description for you. But now we need to prepare some trays and get to planting. Okay, it's time to actually sow some seeds, so let's get on down here. First thing I like to do, of course, is label because I always tend to forget what I'm growing. So I've got all my labels here. We're growing these in transplant trays. You don't have to do this. Of course, you could just direct sow, and you'd probably wanna go about a quarter to a half an inch deep in the bed that you're planting in. But for me, especially with lettuce, especially when you're beginning gardening, you really want to control when that stuff goes in the ground, and so for me, I do it this way. So let's go ahead and take out our black seeded Simpson here, which is gonna go in this one right here. Now there's a couple different ways you can sow lettuce. And if you're curious on how to make seed starting mix, we do have a full video on that that I encourage you to check out. You just want a loose, light mix. I usually make a tiny little depression down in the middle of each of these cells here. And then I typically, especially with lettuce, it really does depend on the type of seed. This is quite a small seed. I'll toss maybe two or three seeds in each hole, because I just want to guarantee that I'm going to get something to germinate. Lettuce is a cool season crop. You really don't want to try to germinate lettuce in temperatures above about 80 degrees Fahrenheit in the soil. So this is a classic spring, fall crop. Let's go ahead and seed these out, and we'll see you when they start to sprout. It's been about eight to 10 days, and I'm going to show you an example of this Ice Queen variety. You can see we have Looks like about four in this hole, there's three in this hole, two in this hole. What you can do now is you can either let these continue to grow or you can do what's called thinning. Now let's take this cell right here as an example. This is clearly the most developed seedling because the leaves are the largest. These are the seed leaves, sometimes called cotyledons, cotyledons, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, doesn't matter, but what you can do is you can say, you know what, I'm gonna sacrifice these two smaller ones. What that'll do is it'll kill those roots off because now there's no top growth. 
and you can say I only want to have one lettuce per cell as I grow this up. Now that's not mandatory. You could also just leave them and you just get lettuce bunched together. That would be a little bit harder to tease out and might grow a little bit more stunted, but that's okay. You just, it's called baby lettuce at that point. So if you take a look, you can thin or you can leave. I'm gonna opt to do some thinning here myself and we just need to let these grow up a little bit longer because if we transplant them right now, they are far too sensitive and they will probably die. It's been about a month since we planted these little lettuce seeds and of course they've now grown up into lettuce adolescents. Looking really nice, this is Paris Island. Honestly, you could just eat it like this. This would be sort of a baby lettuce and we've got a couple other varieties here. I did wanna show you an example of what would happen if you let it go too long without watering it and it got to this size in a seed starting tray. So this guy here is our Black Seeded Simpson, a very popular variety. It looks kind of messed up, looks kind of dead. Honestly, with a little water, this will perk right back up. And if you really need to, you can just clip around the sides here, remove some of the most dead leaves and go ahead and still transplant it. And speaking of, that's exactly what we're going to do. So I'm gonna grab these and these and let's show you how to transplant some lettuce. So I'm out here in the front yard garden, which is my site that I've selected to plant my lettuce. And it brings us really to the most important piece of learning how to grow lettuce successfully, and it's respecting the plant. You have to understand what this plant wants to grow and to thrive. It really does not like to be blasted by heat. So, you know, about 80 degrees Fahrenheit is near its limit of what it can tolerate. And if you really think about it, this is how you grow your gardener's eye. What are you growing? You're growing a very thin, very broad sort of leafy structure that needs a lot of water to remain vigorous, right? And so if it's gonna be blasted by too much heat, not enough water in the soil, well, what's gonna wilt? It's gonna be the leaves. That's all you're really growing here. So you wanna choose at least a semi-spotted area if you're gonna get hot temperatures. In my front yard in the fall winter, I can get away with it right here. In the summer, this particular bed would absolutely crush my lettuce. So what I'm gonna do is just pop out starting with these guys right here. So in, at least in our six cell trays, you can just push the bottom out and you've got what in the nursery trade, at least you'd call a plug, but this is our little lettuce here. And I'm gonna do that with this one, this one, and this one. And this is where you get into discussions about spacing. So plant spacing is, I think maybe given a little more weight sometimes than it deserves because plants can tolerate a little bit more flexibility there than you might think. But with lettuce, a good rule of thumb is somewhere around four to six inches apart if you want to grow full-headed lettuce. Let's get to transplanting, my friends. Now, what you'll notice is you know, when you're planting seeds, you'll sometimes get more than one plant sprout per cell or however you're growing it. This is an example of just having one, but over here, you can see that there are three. Now, in my opinion, there's two ways to deal with this. The first is to get rid of it, and how you get rid of it is kind of up to you. You could compost it, give it to your chickens, you could eat it, or the second is to just plant it, let it grow a little bit, and harvest it when it's a little bit larger, and then slowly harvest every plant but one, and then let that one grow up. So that's what I'm gonna do here, because it's a little bit more of a better use of seeds. So with lettuce, if you're going to fertilize, which is not mandatory, I would fertilize with something that's high in nitrogen. That's the macronutrient that is gonna grow the leaves the most, the vegetative growth of the plant, which is really all we're eating with lettuce. So I wanna come in, take my little hori hori, we'll clear out a little space. I wanna grab just a little sprinkling, a little dusting of bat guano. In this particular case, you don't have to use that. Something like feather meal might work or just an all-purpose fertilizer. Now you can kind of loosen up these roots a little bit. Roots are less sensitive than you might think. And what I kind of like to do is I'll just put it in roughly at ground level here and then just backfill around it, get it in there. And I do give it a little bit of a, a firming up because you, know, you don't want air pockets around those roots and in we go. So all you want to do here is space it out to your liking. You can go about four inches, you can go a little wider. Basically, the wider you go, the more the roots don't have to compete with other plants. The closer you go, the more they are competing. So sometimes, not only will it crowd it out above the ground, but it might crowd it out below the ground. So it's up to you. You can cram it in. You don't have to listen to me here, but I like to go about four or six inches apart. 
So now I've got my lettuce in and it's really just watering them in. That does two things, most obvious being it gives the plant roots some water so they can get established. But number two, when you disturb the soil and you're putting a plant in the ground, it helps to firm up that soil around that root ball that you grew and make sure that there's no air pockets in there because that can be something that weirdly can kill the plant. It needs some oxygen down there, doesn't want to be hanging in air. Another thing you could do at this stage if you want to is put on what's called mulch. So you can just put on some maybe grass clippings, straw, dried leaves, that kind of stuff. A little buffer, maybe one to three inches or so, will give this lettuce some protection from either extreme heat or evaporation, or if it's winter like it is now, cold. It'll protect the ground from cold. I am not gonna mulch right now because my temperatures are pretty moderate, but use that information if you need it. And we'll be back to see how these have settled in in a few days. It's been about seven, 10 days since we planted this lettuce in. So let's take a look and see how it has settled in. And what I'm looking for is nice lush green leaves. Look at these leaves. These are absolutely beautiful. Of course, it's rained. Funnily enough, rain actually brings a little more nitrogen from the atmosphere down into the soil. So that could be part of why they're looking a little green, but these are looking really nice. Now you can do something called the tug test. It's a little bit fancy or a little extra, not necessary, but to make sure that they've transplanted in, you can just give them a little tug and if they're not moving at all, that's a really good sign that the roots are well established and they are not going to go anywhere. They're not gonna die on you. So at this point, lettuce is quite simple to grow. A little mite on me right there, get out of here. Lettuce is quite simple to grow. You wanna keep it in relatively cool temperatures, make sure you're watering it appropriately, mulch it if you need to, if you're getting some heat. And it's getting to the point where we can start one of the different ways to harvest lettuce. So it'll probably be about four or five days. I'll see you in a few. It has been a few weeks since we last visited this bed. And as you can see, much has changed, partially because of this beautiful sun that's streaming in, but also we got a lot of natural rain here in San Diego, which perked this lettuce up like crazy. One thing I wanna call your attention to, there's actually a new plant entering the bed. These are potatoes that I planted below the lettuce a long time ago. The potatoes have now come up, the lettuce is sizing up. So it's a really good time to harvest get this lettuce out of here and let those potatoes grow. But kind of a clever little depth planting tactic where while the potatoes were growing, I was just growing lettuce on top. Nevertheless, there are three major ways that you can harvest lettuce. One, I really prefer for the beginning of the season, one for the middle and one for the end. So let's talk first about the beginning of the season when there's still a lot of time left where lettuce has great conditions to grow. So take a look at this lettuce right here. You have some really nice leaves really large, nice, crispy leaves, but the plant itself isn't that big. So this is a good place to use what's called the cut and come again method. You can use a knife or scissors, doesn't really matter. In this case, I'm gonna use this little harvest knife. And all you do is come around and just slice out the very largest leaves. So you're only taking the largest, oldest, and most developed leaves. And those are of course gonna be on this outer ring of the plant. So you can just come around, slice them, I like to take the ones that might be touching the soil a little bit just so they don't rot and get all, all messed up. And as long as you don't damage this interior of the plant, what we call the crown right in the middle here, this, this, this lettuce is gonna keep growing for quite some time, at least another month or so. And all these small leaves in the center are going to size up. And so I could take probably one more, maybe this guy right here. And you can see, I've almost just cut this down to size to a smaller lettuce. And this is called the cut and come again method. You're getting the largest, most mature leaves, the ones that are most ready to eat, and that's it. So that's method one, really good for the beginning of the season. I'll leave these right here. Now there's another method for the middle of the season, also for someone who's just doesn't really care to like cut each individual leaf. It can be a little, little time consuming. So one thing you can do, remember, see this crown right here? Like I said, as long as you don't damage this crown, the plant will keep growing and you can, in theory, just harvest it however the heck you want. So take a look at this lettuce right here. Let me hunt down and find that growing center, which I believe on this lettuce is right here. So what I can do, and maybe even this one is a better example, so let's actually swap and go to this guy here. What I can do is come through and just slice the lettuce off straight across without even worrying about what I'm cutting. So I can just come in, I'll go a couple inches above the surface of the soil so I know I'm not cutting into that growing tip. I'd probably want a bigger knife for this, but that's fine. I can just go ahead and do that. And look, there's still the growing tip, growing tip, could have gone a little lower, but now in one fell swoop, I've harvested a nice, 
bunch of lettuce and it just didn't take me as much time. The third way to do it is just to remove the plant entirely. And this is great for either you just want it, it's a head lettuce, you wanna harvest it as a head lettuce, or it's kind of the end of the season, you're like, hey, you know what, I'm just gonna take the whole thing off. So in that case, same idea, but you just come all the way down to the bottom and sever it at the root. Nice clean way to harvest lettuce, looks really pretty. And if you wanna clean this up really easily, when you get to the kitchen, you can kind of grab it like this and then just give it a little crown chop like that. And voila, you have a nice head of lettuce and you kind of maximize everything that you want to harvest. So let's take these on back to the harvest table. When you're done harvesting your lettuce, you got to get into the cleaning process. It's really not that crazy provided you harvested it the right way. Remember, I cut off most of the dirt already on all of this. So all I need to do at this point, you can decide, hey, do I want to harvest and serve this as a full leaf or do I want to chop it up? And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and chop it up. So let's say I want to make like a, I don't know, a Caesar salad or something like that and come through, just give it a nice rip. It's really easy when you harvest it like this because then all of the lettuce leaves are kind of broken down into even pieces. What I like to do is harvest a lot of lettuce and then I'll put it in maybe an outdoor sink or a bowl or something like that and I kind of give it a swish. You can look for like little slugs or snails or little bugs and then of course wash all the dirt off. And then what I like to do is you'll want to lay this out and get it dry and then put it in the fridge, maybe with a damp towel and like a bag or something like that. That's gonna be the best way to do it. You want it to be dry so it doesn't start to get all moldy and sloppy in there, but you actually wanna provide a little bit more water in the form of that paper towel so that the humidity isn't so low that the crispness goes down. So it's kind of balancing those two little factors there. But lettuce, hands down, is one of the easiest plants to begin growing. Hopefully this guide showed you how to do it seed to harvest. Please check out our other seed to harvest guides here at Epic Gardening. And if you're looking for the best products in the market, come to our store, shop.epicgardening.com, or you can go to a nursery and shop for some lettuce seeds by grabbing anything from Botanical Interests, one of our sister companies. So until next time, good luck in the garden and keep on growing.